Hi, I am Dr. Goodmanson. This video contains supplemental material intended for my students in my aircraft design classes at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, where I currently teach. The video features excerpts from my textbook, General Aviation Aircraft Design, Applied Methods and Procedures, now also available in a Chinese translation. The book is available online from a large number of outlets, including Elsevier and Amazon. It is recommended for anyone interested in the design of general aviation aircraft. Greetings fellow aircraft designers. In this video I am going to run the rest of the standard aerodynamic checks on my brand new LSA. If you are joining us for the first time, you really need to start at the beginning of the series to see where we came from and how we got to here. If you are a long time viewer and haven't yet given these videos a thumbs up rating, please do so now. This is actually very important to video producers like me. I am giving you a great insight into realistic aircraft design for free. The only thing you have to do to show appreciation is to click on that thumbs up button. Anyway, we left off in part 6 where I determined the maximum lift coefficient for the configuration. First, it yielded a CL max of 1.41 in version 2A with a NACA 4415 and 4412 airfoils. I decided to check what would happen if I replaced these with a NACA 2412 airfoil used on dozens of Cessna aircraft. This was version 2B. The NACA 2412 was hands down a much better choice as it boosted the CL max by 13% from 1.41 to 1.602. I am fairly confident now that this configuration will be capable of meeting the LSA rule of maximum stalling speed without a high lift system of 45 kcas. Now let's do this in an organized manner. I have listed the checks that I will be doing. Check 1 CL max for basic stall is complete. Now let's do number 2 stick fix neutral point. Let's start by confirming the CG is indeed at the quarter court of the mean geometry cord. Turn on the nodes group, select the ballast node, go to tools, specify a CG location, select the last option, enter 25, press adjust and close. Make sure we set a low angle of attack, I prefer 0 degrees. It doesn't really matter what speed we use, let's use the 45 kcas, press OK. Also make sure all control surface deflections are neutral. Now select Tasks, determine neutral point. Press Analyze. There we have it. We can see that method 2 gives a slightly lower value of 54.74% MGC. This neutral point is inside a typical range for a wing horizontal system like this, so I'm just going to move to the next check. First, transfer method 2 to update the model. Copy the report. Press close. Go to edit remark. From the pop-up menu, select all. Select paste. There we go. Check 2 is done. Let's proceed to check 3. Trim for cruise at 100 kcas. I intend for this airplane to be used as a cruiser that safely transports one or two persons at 100 kcas at sea level. This would give almost a 110 kcas cruising speed at 6000 feet. Select the reference free stream properties icon. Change 45 to 100 kcas. Press OK. Select tasks. Trimmed level flight. Press the next button, but remember to check that the entries on each page are appropriate. Press the trim button. Let's skip over the iterations. Alrighty, the method shows the aircraft trims out at 1.91 degree angle of attack, with elevated deflected 2 degrees trailing edge up. Recall from part 3 that version 1 trimmed out at 120 kcas with 5.5 degree elevated deflection. That was a warning flag. This, on the other hand, is reasonable. What it suggests, however, is that perhaps I should introduce an angle of incidence for the horizontal tail for this condition, so the elevator will be close to neutral. I will deal with that later. OK, press the close button. Check 3 is done. Let's proceed to check 4. Trim for stall at gross weight and center of gravity at the quarter cord. Open the reference free stream properties form again. Set the airspeed to 45 kcas. Press OK. Also, select Tasks Trimmed Level Flight. 
press the next button to get to the trim button, press it. Again, we skip the iterations. And we note the angle of attack of 16.71 degree and elevated deflection of 12.35 degrees trailing edge up. We will be using these numbers in a moment, but for now we can consider check 4 done. Let's go to check 5. Trim for stall at gross weight and central gravity at 15% of the mean geometric cord. Start by moving the central gravity to 15% of the mean geometric cord by selecting the ballast node. Then select Tools, specify CG location. Select the last option, enter 15, press Adjust and Close. Go back to the Trim Wizard, navigate to the Trim button, press it. Once again we skip the iterations. We find that when the central gravity is at 15% mean geometry cord, the angle of attack is 17.39 degrees and the elevator is deflected at 16.83 degrees trailing edge up. This completes check 5. However, we want to look at checks 4 and 5 in a more structured manner. The graph you see was made in Excel. I'm simply plotting the elevator deflections as a function of CG position. I expect the control system in my airplane will offer a maximum elevated deflection of 25 degrees trailing edge up and probably 15 degrees trailing edge down. But here the trailing edge up deflection is of interest. It has a negative sign. It appears to stay well below the 25 degree maximum. As stated in my book and as a rule of thumb, try not to use much more than half of that or minus 12.5 degrees. This is to avoid running out of elevator at forward CG when flaring for landing. Even though you design the control system to give you 25 degrees, you will not get it in flight using a manual control system. The air loads will stretch the control cables and push rods and deflect pulleys. The fact is, if you have never done this before on a real aircraft, you'll be in for a surprise. Assume you did a good job if you get 75% of the available elevated deflection. Here I would say that even going close to 17 degrees is probably okay because I still have to add the fuselage. It will destabilize the aircraft and move the stick fixed neutral point forward. This should reduce the 17 degree deflection a bit. Okay, now let's do some dynamic stability work. I will finish the remaining checks all at once. Why does this have to be done, you ask? Because it exposes good or bad dynamic properties of the airplane. It is our responsibility to design aircraft that have good dynamic properties. Such aircraft are far less likely to turn out to be death traps, a sentiment echoed by the FAA as is exemplified by this standard, the ASTM F2245, which the FAA considers as one of a bunch of ASTM standards that are acceptable for the certification of LSAs. Here we want to read over paragraph 4.5, controllability and maneuverability. What we have done thus far is to check some of the subparagraphs that deal with static longitudinal stability. But here, in subparagraph 4.5.6, dynamic stability, it reads relatively indiscernibly that any oscillations shall exhibit decreasing amplitude with the appropriate speed range, with flaps extended from VSO, the stalling speed with flaps extended, to the VFE, which is the flap extended speed, and with flaps retracted from VS, which is stalling speed clean, to VDF, which is the maximum demonstrated dive speed. Let me translate. All oscillatory motion shall be naturally damped over the entire speed range of the airplane with and without flaps. That's why. The first thing that needs to get done is to trim the airplane at the flight condition of interest. This flight condition is 100 kcas at sea level with the central gravity at 25% mgc. If the airspeed is low, the aircraft will be flying at a high angle of attack and with a large elevator deflection as we have already seen. However, at high speed, the angle of attack and elevator deflection are both low. As far as stability and control theory is concerned, these are two different aircraft. Therefore, it is vital to trim for each speed. Open the VLM console. Press the reset button on the controllers tab. Then open the reference free stream properties form and set the angle of attack to zero and calibrated airspeed to 100 kcas. Press OK to exit. Next select the ballast node. Then select tools followed by the specify ACG location tool. Select the bottom option again 
and type 25. Press Adjust and Close. Select Tasks Trimmed Level Flight. Press the Next button to get to the Trim button. Press the Trim button. Let's skip over the iterations. Press Close to exit. Select Tasks Determine Stability Derivatives. This opens a form that offers you to determine around 90 stability derivatives, static and dynamic. Once Surfaces has calculated these, you can transfer their values to the model, just like we did the stick fix neutral point. The values are transferred to math objects that exist in the worksheet. The reason for having the user directly transfer these values to the model is to allow the user to check out different flight conditions without always overriding the current values each time. This might lead to confusion. Perhaps you want to store the 100 KCAS flight condition to show to your boss later, but are still curious to see what the airplane does say at 50 KCAS or 150 KCAS. Anyway, what we want to do here is to pick the angle of attack and your derivatives and the three P, Q and R derivatives. The angular derivatives are static and include derivatives like the lift curve slope, CL alpha, longitudinal derivative, CM alpha, directional stability derivative, CN beta, and dihedral effect, CL beta. In contrast, the blocks associated with roll rate P, pitch rate Q, and yaw rate R are dynamic derivatives. Then press the Analyze button. Surfaces will automatically move to the Results Matrix tab to show you it is hard at work. It will only stay there for two calculations, and then it moves to the Stability Derivatives tab so you can start to see the results as soon as they are computed. OK, Surfaces has completed determining the requested stability derivatives for the aircraft around the 100 kcas airspeed. You can see we have a CL alpha of 5.11 per radian, which is what I would expect for this wing horizontal tail system. CM alpha is minus 1.52. It is a hair too strong a pitching moment change for this class of aircraft. It should be between minus 0.5 to minus 1 tops for LSA according to figure 11-10 in my book. In other words, if anything, the aircraft is too stable. Also, dihedral effect is spot on, about minus 0.07 per radian, and so is the directional stability, C and beta. It is a little over 0.1 per radian. If the values for your aircraft are not within the correct range for the class of aircraft, you have to fix things to get them there. Figures 11-10, 11-15 and 11-16 give great guidance in this capacity. Unfortunately, due to time constraints, I'll have to let this suffice for this form. Let's transfer the results to the model. Click the Transfer tab, press the Select All button, press Deselect Non-Requested to only transfer values that we requested on the Parameters tab. Make sure the checkbox when transferring WARN if variable contains a formula before transferring is checked. Press the Transfer button. Generally, we want to preserve all formulas, so press No here. When done, press the close button. Before we run the dynamic stability checks, there is a very, very important step that we have to do. We have to confirm the correct settings for four dynamic stability derivatives. Two are time-dependent derivatives that Surfaces does not calculate. Two are airspeed-related derivatives. First, scroll down to the derivative CM alpha dot, denoted in Surfaces as CMTA. This modifies the total pitching moment due to the contribution associated with the time rate of change of angle of attack. More information on this derivative can be found in books such as those by Ashley, Napolitano and Etkin, to name a few. This setup assumes we know the value of the derivative CLTA underscore HT, which is a change in the horizontal tail's lift coefficient with rate of change of its angle of attack. It is set up correctly here, although more work is needed to confirm the aforementioned derivative. Then double click on ZZTA, which is the change in the lift component associated with the rate of change of angle of attack. A token value is 1.7. This, like CMTA, should be specifically calculated, even though these values are reasonable. Press OK. Next, scroll to the speed damping derivative, CXU. Since this is a propeller aircraft, I have to copy the third equation and paste it into the formula box. Press OK. Finally, double-click on ZZU, the lift torch damping, and confirm the formula is what is shown here. Press OK. 
We're done with the preparation. Click to open the Stab Console. This tool does everything we need to show whether the most important dynamics are acceptable. Here we see the short period oscillation, a dynamic mode that results from sudden elevator inputs. It is oscillatory mode number one, and it is converging or naturally damped. If anything, the plane looks like a little bit too damped. We should look at that in more detail. The fugoid is an exchange of kinetic and potential energy. It is oscillatory mode number two, and it too is naturally damped. It actually looks good. Before I forget, make sure that the airplane has a minimum drag coefficient. This one should be 0 0.03 or 300 drag counts. That's what I expect the minimum drag coefficient to amount to, although I have yet to conduct a drag analysis. Drag has important effect on this dynamic mode. The short period and fucoid are the two longitudinal dynamic modes to check. Both are damped, although I'm going to look closer at the short period mode once I have completed the fuselage. It is possible the horizontal tail could be made smaller. Anyway, next take a look at the spiral stability mode. It is converging as well, albeit weakly. That is acceptable. This mode represents the change in bank angle with time. However, spiral stability is not an oscillatory mode. Finally, let's check the Dutch roll. It is another oscillatory mode that we want to be converging. It is strongly converging. That is great to know. All three lateral directional modes are naturally damped. All three oscillatory modes are naturally damped as well. This model will serve as a great baseline for future versions of this project. Now let me show you a great tool offered in Surfaces. The program allows us to play the dynamic modes in real time. Before using it, make sure you save the model without any points showing and all vectors showing. Let's turn off the CG and neutral point avatars. All of this is just to make the viewing experience cleaner. Also, let's turn on the legend. Press the Press to select objects for legend button and load it up with interesting parameters to show while we play the dynamics. Here I typically select important reference values, the position of the central gravity, airspeed, control surface deflections, and angle of attack and yaw. OK, let's uh, just zoom a little. Turn on vectors and press save. During playback, surfaces will use the currently saved version for display. Go back to the stab console. Alrighty, let's play the Dutch roll first. You can see how quickly a 10 degree deviation in yaw dampens to zero. Large aircraft must usually dampen to no worse than 10% of the initial deviation in 7 cycles or less. Not a problem for this geometry. Of course, the damping reduces with altitude. A complete dynamic analysis involves investigating these modes everywhere within the predicted flight envelope of the aircraft, which is something I have yet to even begin. This is the short period oscillation being played. Pressing these blue movie icons does not change the graph shown on the console, only what is played in the workspace. Anyway, we have come to the end of what I want to show you in this session. But there should be a lingering question in your mind regarding the accuracy of these predictions. A part of what engineers must do is what is called validation. How accurate are the predictions being made? This particular analysis solves the full set of equations of motion using the stability derivatives and inertia parameters entered by the user. If your model is well made, there is no reason for why you won't achieve predictions similar to those shown in these graphs which compares flight test experiments to surfaces predictions for the Dutch roll and fucoid modes for a pretty darn well-known aircraft that I worked on. Note that the deviation towards the end is due to pilot inputs, but that said, the agreement between experiment and prediction is undeniable. Anyway, I plan to keep polishing this aircraft in the near future. As usual, please consider giving this video a thumbs up rating on YouTube, and if you haven't already, subscribe so you can be notified of future videos that give various design tips to aspiring aircraft designers. I'll see you in the next video.